There are two things you notice when you arrive in Ulaanbaatar, and the first is the temperature. This is the world's coldest capital, and this morning the thermometer was showing minus 27 degrees centigrade. The second is the pollution. The sun's just coming up, and what you think is morning fog is actually a layer of pollution blanketing the city. And here in one of the worst affected neighborhoods, every breath I take is full of coal smoke. I can smell that the air is absolutely filthy. I want to find out what it's doing to the city's inhabitants and to children whose lungs are still developing. Dr. Oyun Beleg is a senior pediatrician at this children's hospital. <coughs> she tells me in Mongolia, respiratory illness is the biggest killer of children under five. In the intensive care ward, Mungun has pneumonia and is struggling to clear his lungs. He's only eight months old. Okay. According to UNICEF, cases of respiratory infections have tripled here over the last 10 years as pollution surges. Dr. Oyun Beleg says a disaster is unfolding and she's overwhelmed. <laughs> Bolaredina has been by Mungun's side for the past 10 days, leaving her husband to care for her two other children. I leave Mungun, exhausted from coughing and breathing from a tank of oxygen. The next few days will be critical for him. Mungun's doctor suggested I join Dr. Minjma, a colleague, on her round of home visits. We're off to visit a newborn baby who's living in a gur, one of the traditional homes. Many of the city's poorer residents live year-round in these felt tents. It's <laughs> It's minus 20 outside, minus 20. We're in a tent and it's toasty warm, all thanks to this stove. But there are more than half a million of these in the capital, all pumping out smoke, and it's adding up to a public health disaster. The coal smoke creates a smog of floating soot particles. Some of these are small enough to bypass the body's defenses and cause fatal illnesses, respiratory disease, heart disease, even cancer. The most dangerous particles are called PM 2.5. The PM stands for particulate matter. The 2.5 
means they're less than 2.5 thousandths of a millimetre across. Invisible and potentially deadly. It's minus 23 this morning. This is when air is at the worst. I can, I can smell the particulate in my nose. It's filthy. And what's most worrying is that according to the World Health Organization, the threshold for pollution for PM2.5 should be 25. According to this little measurer, it's getting close to 900. It's an approximate reading, but it shows me the scale of the problem. I've come here to meet Mungu's dad. This also happens to be one of the most polluted neighbourhoods in the city. Like many people in the capital, Gan Barta was born in the countryside and moved to the city to earn a living. He says it's painful watching his children growing up in its filthy air. What about the air quality in this area? How does that affect you? Mm. Which is According to this, the pollution is really high. It's hazardous. The recommended level of that is 25. It's more than 15 times the recommended level. Do you worry about bringing Mungu back here? Gan Barta faces a terrible dilemma. He's just started a new business, making and selling noodles. But staying in the city puts his children's health at risk. Thanks. Gan Barta has to make some deliveries. His route takes us through Ulan Barta's expanding suburbs. Driving around, do you notice that some places are more polluted than others? Gan Barta said when he moved here from the countryside 20 years ago, the pollution was much less. But one and a half million people now live in this city, half of Mongolia's entire population. From a lookout point, the director of the National Center for Public Health shows me the cloud of smog poisoning the capital. Dr. Tsogbata advises the government on the impact of pollution. Air pollution is uh, number one public health problem. It is catastrophe. This is probably the, uh, one of the worst polluted situation in the world ever. It's just disappeared in the smog. Disappeared in the smog. And what, is the, what are the health implications of what we're looking at? What does that mean for those people's health? There is no one organ that air pollution doesn't affect, uh, particularly cardiovascular and uh, respiratory um, brain function, reproductive health are mostly affected by air pollution um, at the drastic level. The air pollution is giving people lung cancer, it's killing people, it's causing stillbirths and miscarriage. 
we have our enemy, uh, collective enemy identified. Now it's time for us to um, start changing things rapidly. How are you going to fix this problem? The ultimate solution to fix air pollution is to get rid of raw coal. Bigger question is, how are you going to implement that? Most people here can only afford the cheap raw coal that causes this pollution. Dr. Togbarta told me there's only one definite way to breathe clean air. Leave the city. I take his advice and head out to the countryside. When I left Ulaanbaatar, I checked the air on my pollution monitor and it was between 8 and 900. I'm checking it now and it says 1. I wonder why anyone would abandon air like this for the smog of the city. I soon find out. There's a pony and two calves here and they obviously weren't able to get enough pasture to keep going through the winter months. The Mongolians have a word for this, they call it a zud, and it means when the grass doesn't grow in the summer so it can't sustain the animals in the winter. And for the herders who depend on these animals for their livelihood, it's a disaster. We follow a trail of carcasses. So far this winter, 700,000 animals have died. It's the third year in a row the Zud has struck. Climate change is making these deep freezes more common and more severe. A few miles off road, we come across a family of nomads. The herder, Batbold, tells me the lack of pasture has devastated his livestock. His animals are starving. Some are so weak, if they lie down for too long, they die. There you go. How many times a day do you do that? Inside, they're trying to keep the weakest animals alive. What's up with the goat over here? The loss of a single goat is a financial blow. This winter, Batbold has already lost a third of his animals. He's watching his world fall apart. Hay is in short supply, so Batbold has taken out a loan to pay for feed. This means if he loses more livestock, he'll go bankrupt. So you really need all your animals to stay alive now? Mr. Batball's typical of the herders who are struggling to make it through these difficult winters. And it's situations like this where the livestock is dying that's making so many decide to give up and relocate to the capital. 
bat old leaves to round up some animals that have wandered off in search of food. Like his livestock, he's entirely at the mercy of the elements. And every time someone like him is driven off the land, another coal fire is lit in the capital. What's happening in the countryside is causing 40,000 people to move to the city each year. In these rapidly expanding neighborhoods, there's no running water. And there's only limited access to electricity and central heating. For now, coal is the only option. The air today is absolutely terrible. Well, this has reached the limit of what it can measure. 999 is as high as it goes. And an app I've got has declared the pollution today an air apocalypse. I'm anxious to find out how baby Mungun is doing. Hi, Bola Red and Air. How are you? Nice to see you again. How's Mungun doing? Uh, Many mothers here have had a similar experience. Scientists researching air pollution in Ulaanbaatar have found it harms children in the womb, causing premature birth, low birth weight and miscarriages. In the heavily polluted winter months, five times as many unborn babies die. Nowhere in the city is safe from the deadly air. The indoor air pollution in my hotel is really bad. Sometimes it's terribly bad. Right now, it's four times the safe level. So I'm gonna try and reduce it using this homemade air purifier. It's just an air filter attached to a cheap but powerful fan. I'm gonna plug it in, give it an hour, and see if I can reduce this number to something more acceptable. Okay. And it has, I mean, you see, it's actually going down already. Look at that. Just over an hour later, and it's brought the pollution levels in this room down to 15, which is well under the WHO guidelines. The moment I open this window and let in the pollution from the outside, whoa, oh my goodness. It's 15 times the recommended level. I decide to give a filter to Ganbata, Mungun's dad. It costs 60 pounds, a week's wages here. The PM reading in Mungun's room is 56, too high. It's a HEPA filter. I've got one in my hotel room and it does reduce the indoor air pollution. Okay. It's now it's still on 53, 54, 55. I mean, it will take, it does take time to circulate all the air in the room, but let's give it a chance. An hour later, we return. The levels have gone up. Yeah, this hasn't worked out as I hoped. I, we left it for an hour. And I'm telling you, this works in my hotel room. 
but here it doesn't seem to be able to re reduce the PM 2.5. Jag tror att min version är inte det som jag kom startat. Jag är inte den jag har sett att jag tror att jag gjort mer chockad. Det är inte som jag har sett att jag har gjort mer chockad. It was naive to think an air purifier could fix this. Yep. Well, they say this is the problem out here. The air quality is terrible. It's saying something like ten times the level of PM two point five. So having an air filter up there is like King Canute trying to hold back the waves. It's the Lunar New Year, a national holiday. Mongolians make offerings of milk to mark the start of spring. It's so cold, the liquid freezes mid-air. Pollution levels are high. That morning, Ganbata calls. Mungun has been discharged from hospital. The doctors need his bed for another child with breathing difficulties. Morning. Ganbata is dropping everything to get Bolaredine and Mungun to a room in a hostel outside the city. Travel safely. I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 to look after his other children and his new business, but they've bought Mungun some breathing space. However, soon they'll have to bring him home again, back into the toxic air. As they escape, they pass a goods train carrying a cargo of cheap coal destined for the heart of the city. For watching this Unreported World episode, click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world. <laughs>